Next, take a look at the drawing that we've provided in the handouts for you to download. Go ahead and make sure that drawing's printed out and in front of you now. If you need to, pause the video and print out the, the drawing. The drawing shows a top view of an office building with two rooms. We see that there's lighting fixtures on the left side and on the right. And we see that there's symbols for receptacles, for data drops, for switches. And then at the bottom of the drawing, we see that there's a panel called, it says existing panel, 200 amp panel, three phase, four wire, 120, 208 volt. I'll come back to that in a minute. On the top right, we see an electrical legend showing the symbols and a description of the symbols that are on the drawing. We see receptacles and duplex or quad duplex, phone stub ups, 20 amp switches. Um, it shows a two by two fluorescent, or I should say two by two recessed LEDs, two by four recessed LEDs. And then it shows how the plan describes the symbols for home runs. Okay, at the bottom it shows it's a commercial office is the name of the project. It's, this is sheet E1. The very bottom in tiny letters it shows the scale at a quarter inch equals one foot. Now I'll go on to describe the drawing on the left some more. Blueprints are one-dimensional drawings, meaning this is a top view. Okay, there's no mention of how high the ceiling is in this space. We're going to imagine it's a nine foot ceiling, but it doesn't say that on this drawing. And sometimes on electrical drawings, it just doesn't show ceiling height. You have to go to architectural drawings for that. But you might imagine that, or let me say it this way, in, in, when you really run the conduit in this, you have to go up out of the wall, across, and even down into light fixtures. And then in light fixtures, rather than running from fixture to fixture, you'll literally maybe come out of the top of a fixture a little bit, go over and down into the top of another fixture. Same with these outlet feeds, okay? Now, we're going to estimate this, or I'm going to ask you to do your takeoff for MC cable, okay? But, uh, but this is going to be MC cable, so these dotted lines indicate um, what? Conduit and wire, or MC cable. Okay, again, the A21 here, the A22, 23, that indicates home runs. Okay, of course, S's are, stand for switches and so on. So again, these are one dimensional. When you're rolling this off, um, I'll show you in another video the tools you use for measuring conduit called a Scalex, but I just want to explain the drawing in this um, segment. So that's it. You'll make a material list from this drawing. You'll roll off the conduit, measure the conduit, count devices. I'm going to show you an example of a takeoff next. I also just want to say that if you're estimating any size commercial job, you might have lots and lots of rooms like these, of course. It could be a whole office a whole floor of office building. Again, the purpose in this drawing is to show you the basics of how to use Red Rhino to do takeoff and how to do input, okay? Next screenshot is a material takeoff form. Again, if you don't have this printed out or if you don't have it in front of you, go ahead and get it and pause this video. This is similar to a material takeoff form that's provided by Red Rhino. At the top, we see the name of the form is called Master Takeoff. Over on the left, the job name is Commercial Office. And on the right, we, we wrote the section Power and Lighting. Okay, so down in the material column here is where we wrote the materials. Then the quantities go in the quantity section. Now, when you're doing a material takeoff for reals, you won't see this assembly catalog information or any of the information down here. Here's the deal. We input, or I should say, I, I built this so that you could know what assembly or where to find the assembly for these items. As an example, here's a 20 amp duplex and it shows that there were eight of them on the drawing. Now, this is a little different perhaps than you're used to doing this because now you're going to count receptacles because when you input receptacles in Red Rhino using assemblies, it's going to show all the parts and pieces needed for the receptacle, the box, the plastering, the plug, the plate, etc. Okay, so again, on this takeoff form, hopefully you have it printed out by now, 
you this this is an example of making a material list from the blueprints and then you'll input from this list into Red Rhino. I'll show you a video on that or videos on that. Okay, so I'm going down this list here, 20 amp duplex receptacle, 20 amp quad, there's three of them, 20 amp duplex weatherproof GFI, and so on. Now look here, this is the data stub up. Notice that there's five of them. Let me go back and show you the symbol of that to refresh your memory. Here I just went back to the drawing to point out some things again as I was describing. See these are this this is a symbol for the data stub up. Over here we see the the phone data stub up designation there. Thought I had that phone shut off. <laughs> and uh and so and so on. So see we have symbols for receptacles, um, symbols for um, quad receptacles, and all we did was we counted those and put the counts on the takeoff um, on the takeoff form. Okay, I'll get back to the takeoff form now. Okay, back to the takeoff form. Again, I'm just counting receptacles, counting quads and, and uh, receptacles and switches and data stub ups here, fixtures and all, because I'm going to input using um, using special tools for Red Rhino that puts all the materials in for us. Now, so these, these first few items are shown using the assembly catalog. Then I'm going to go into Red Rhino and show you how to use the device wizard, okay? It makes it really fast to input materials. I'll show you a couple examples of that used for the switches. Then also MC cable I showed to use the wizards and specifically the conduit wizard. Now I'll show you all this in a video, but again, I set this material takeoff form so you could go into it, read it, and then just know where to navigate in Red Rhino Estimate to input the information. Again, down here further is circuit breakers, 4S box, these are assemblies, 411 box, red wire nuts. At the bottom I showed where there, there is $75 worth of permit fees, and I'll show you how to put that in. Okay, next I'm going to show how to actually input these materials into Red Rhino. In this video, I'm going to explain the material takeoff process. On the right, we see the blueprint or the, the plan page. And on the left is the material takeoff form. Now, I've already explained the, the overview of the plans and the takeoff form, but I want to explain something. Red Rhino has pre-built assemblies. I explained this a little bit before, but because of that, you can just count the number of receptacles and quad receptacles and GFI receptacles and data stub ups and so on. You can just count them and list them, and then when you go and input them into Red Rhino, it'll it'll uh, display all the components needed for a duplex or a quad receptacle or GFI. So long story short is I use highlighters and I highlight, I might pick a yellow highlighter and highlight all the duplex receptacles as I count them, okay? So there's, uh, I'd count all the duplex receptacles, list them on the takeoff sheet. All the quads, same thing, the quad receptacles, I'd count the quads, and I'd input them on the takeoff sheet. Now, on your handout, just highlight the, the different components as you count them so you don't count them twice. Now, so we can see that I've, I've counted and input items in the takeoff page on the left. I also took off conduit. Now, I'm going to explain that in just a few minutes. But we see that there's a 12-2 MC cable, 140 feet. 12-3 um, uh, MC cable on the takeoff page over here, 190 feet, and so on. Also, circuit breakers. Now, let me explain a little bit about circuit breakers. On a on a uh, commercial project, a lot of times they have a panel schedule that shows the panels and the circuit breakers. So I just go there and count all the circuit breakers to input into Red Rhino to capture the labor. Now here I showed that the circuit breakers cost $18. We're going to input that later. Okay, and it, I also input. Now it's not shown on the blueprints, but I added a 4S box and a four, two 411 boxes and some wire nuts, okay? So there are certain things that you have to see through the blueprints to know that you need it, and also the blueprints are one-dimensional. So they just show a top view, if you would, of what's going on here. They don't show the switch height or the receptacle height. Again, I'm just giving an overview on how this works. Now I'm going to show a couple tools that I use for doing takeoff. I explained to you that I use highlighters, so I just get several different colors. Actually, these represent most of the colors I use. I use 
uh, highlighters and I highlight the items on the plants different colors. I might uh, highlight all the duplex receptacles yellow, all the quads pink, all the 2 by 4 light fixtures blue, and so on. You can pick your own color code, but I color code these items so that I don't count them twice. Here's another little doohickey I, I uh, use. It's, a, called a, it's called a tally counter. Um, some call it a thumb clicker counter. <laughs> but uh, long story short is I use this to count light fixtures and receptacles. Now, the plan that we're showing here is a very small plan, but you might have several floors of lighting fixtures or receptacles you have to count on commercial projects or any type of project. So I use one of these uh, tally counters so I can keep count. What I do is I highlight, say, a light fixture and I click the counter, okay, and highlight, click, highlight, click, highlight, click, and that way um, I keep track and don't count things twice. Okay, now the third and final image I'm going to show you is a plan wheel. This is called a scale X. Now, a scale X cost about, I don't know, $60 or so. You can get them at Home Depot last I checked, or you can buy them online. Now, you don't need anything really fancy. Uh, mine's actually black. Maybe mine's outdated. Um, but uh, the idea is, is this little wheel here, you, you, let me say it this way. Let me start over. You set the scale of the blueprints on the, on the uh, scale X. And then when you roll across the blueprints, it measures the length of conduit needed or the length of anything. So then the digital readout shows you the length that you need. And I use this again for taking off conduit. So there's two different main brands. There's ScaleX and ScaleMaster. They both work the same. And you don't need the expensive digital or, or Bluetooth versions, um, just, uh, just a plain uh, version, okay? So I wanted to show you that tool. That's what you use for ta conduit takeoff. Now, let me go up a little bit further. I'm going over on the blueprints here, but I want to explain something. There's a couple of things you need to know. As we all know, these blueprints are a single dimension, right? They're not three-dimensional. So what I mean by that is we know that the conduit has to come up out of the switch and go up the wall and then across and over to the light fixtures. And then it daisy chains light fixture to light fixture. That's about the same height, right? Same with the receptacles. The receptacles, if they don't stub down the wall, then they have to go up, over, and down with conduit, okay? So again, my purpose in explaining this is I use this scale X, set the scale, and I roll this off. Here's how to roll this off. What I do is I usually um, over roll to allow for the height. Say I know the distance is 12 feet, the ceiling height is 12 feet, the switches are about 4 feet, so I just roll the scale X across the drawings till I know it's about 10 feet, and then I roll over and up, say, to the light first light fixture, and then I roll slightly beyond it, called over roll, to make up for the amount up that goes down into the top of the light fixture. To take off from fixture to fixture, I might start down below this light fixture to give a little over roll for the amount of MC cable that goes again up and down out of the fixtures. So I'll roll from this fixture and pass that one, again allowing uh, for over, or I should say over rolling, allowing for the riser, the part that goes up, okay? So I use the over roll, I just over roll, um, to account for the, the amount that goes up. I do this with feeders, um, with uh, MC cable, any conduits. Now, another thing I want to explain, when you're taking off conduit, always take off at right angles to the, to the drawing. So in this case, what I would do is, as I explained, I would go roll down below that till I got to, to several feet to allow for the riser, and then I'd put my cursor or, or roller on here, my scale X on here, I'd roll over and up, straight up again at right angles. Okay, so that's it for the rolling uh, or how to take off conduit. Let me share something else. Another thing that's important, and I won't explain this in great detail, but this is important, is, is that you you count the number of runs of conduit. The definition of a run of conduit is, is from an, a device to a fixture or from a fixture to a fixture. Each one of these segmented lines represents a run of conduit. Now, the reason that you're going to want to know the number of runs is, is when we input this using the conduit wizard, the conduit wizard is going to show 
two connectors per run of conduit. So you need to count the number of runs. Now over here on the left, you see the 12 to MC cable. I show the runs equals 11. There's 11 runs. There's 140 feet total and 11 runs, okay? So here, the 12, three, there was 190 feet total and runs equals 12. Now, three quarter EMT here, there's no, um, on the on the drawing on the right again, it doesn't show the necessarily the type of conduit it shows the circuit numbers. Now let me cover that real quick, okay? Um, sometimes blueprints do show the exact size of uh, conduit and wire. Now in this case, I'm making an assumption that the receptacles are all fed with MC cable, so are the lighting fixtures, okay? Since the lighting fixtures are AB, then the way I, I rolled this off is, is using 12-3 MC cable for the light fixtures, because they're switched AB. In other words, they need two conductors um, to run uh, across uh, uh, through the light fixtures. Now, we notice that the, the little arrows here with circuit numbers, A21, A22, 23, by seeing the circuit numbers here, we can determine the number of 20 amp circuit breakers that are needed, okay? So the circuit breakers are listed here. There's five um, one pole 20 amp circuit breakers listed on the takeoff sheet. Again, it would be good if you just go ahead and practice the takeoff yourself. See if you come up with a different distance on conduit or different counts than I did on my takeoff, okay? The fact is, is that any two estimators almost on the planet would it would bid this job, everybody would come up with a different amount. Um, it's just the way it is. You want to estimate as close as you can, but go practice on your own takeoff sheet and, and uh, on a blank one and fill that out, okay? We provide you with a blank takeoff sheet so you can do that. Now last but not least of my description with conduit takeoff here is, is um, my point is, is that you have a certain wiring method that you use when you're doing electrical projects of how you come out of the panel. Mostly you cannot come out, well, I'll say in my, in my instance or my experience in California, we don't come out of panels and we can't come out of panels with MC cable. So we have to stub up out of the panel with three quarter. A lot of times what we might do is bring a three quarter conduit up over and into the accessible ceiling space, set a junction box, and then drop down to the nearest receptacle of that circuit or circuits um, to, um, to catch the um, circuits feeding these receptacles. And that's just what I did on this uh, takeoff. You'll notice that there's 20 feet of three quarter with five number 12s. So what I did, again, my, my uh, uh, how should I say it? The way I see it is I would stub out conduit here, set a junction box, and then drop down into the different circuits, okay? So, um, so it, again, I explained that sometimes you have to see through the blueprints. That's one of the things you have to just know and see through. What do you actually need for home runs, okay? So that's it for this video. Next, we're going to input the items using Red Rhino. In this video, we're going to start inputting materials into Red Rhino software, but first I want to explain uh, what you see on your screen. On the right, um, you can see that there's a drawing, and the drawing is highlighted now. So, as I explained previously, when I make a material list or do material takeoff, I actually highlight the blueprint. Now, we're talking about when you're estimating using paper blueprints. I highlight the blueprint and color code it. So, as I count items, I highlight them so I don't count them twice. In this case, you'll see that I, I uh, color-coded the uh, duplex receptacles yellow, the quads are shown in pink, and then all the conduit is shown with orange. Now, I ran out of highlighter colors, <laughs> but, uh, but the, the point is, is as I rolled off or took off the conduit there, measured it, I highlighted it so I don't count it twice. Now this is a simple drawing, but in a real commercial drawing, you might see several rooms, even 10 rooms or more, shown on one blueprint page. So it's important that you count stuff or highlight stuff to know that you've counted it already so you don't count it twice. Now on the left, again, is the material takeoff list. Again, if you if you do a material takeoff on the example that we provided, your, your outcome might be different. You might have different lengths of conduit, okay? So check my work with your own work. 
Now, uh, that said, on the left-hand side, again, shows the quantity of items, the materials, the quantities. And on the right, what I did just for sake of you learning to use Red Rhino software is I explained how you would use Red Rhino assemblies or wizards or product catalog to input the materials. Normally, your material takeoff form wouldn't have anything to the right of quantity there. Okay, so next we're going to show um, we're going to show how to get started using Red Rhino software with the material takeoff form. In this screenshot, we see the takeoff form on the right and Red Rhino on the left. So I'm just going to fly through this and show you how to input these materials. Okay, now let me explain something. Your results might look a little bit different in Red Rhino. Red Rhino has material pricing, and they update that pricing each month at the end of each month. So your prices might come out different. Okay, so I'm not going to highlight what my prices are versus your prices. My idea is to show you how this thing works and how you can use the assemblies to to uh, estimate a lot faster. So follow along and input the materials into Red Rhino. I always like to start people at the estimate list. So assuming that you're logged into Red Rhino, this is the home page you see on the screen on the left. And I want you to start by creating an estimate. So you're going to go to the left and click the list estimate button, or rather it's a link. Click on list estimates. When you do, it'll open up and show you all the estimates that you have in Red Rhino. Now you'll see I have other ones that I've used for training or examples here. I'm going to click the New button at the top right. Do the same thing. Click New to create a new estimate. Now I'm just going to fill out, and I'd like you to do the same, I'm just going to fill out the minimum amount of fields needed to get going. And that is you just have to type the name of the estimate in here. I'm going to name it Commercial Estimate. Now, of course, if you're doing this for real, you would actually put the name of the estimate in here. And don't ever mess with the material pricing over here on the right. Just click the Save button to create a new estimate. And when it stops spinning, you'll see the estimate listed in here. Now, next, you're going to create section or sections. The purpose of sections is to break out pricing. We're just going to create one section for this example. So you go down to the right, lower right here, click the New button. It opens a window. Type in the section name. Now, again, I have other videos that show you the use of sections, and I'm going to show you those videos in a minute here, but we're just going to name it Power and Lighting. Okay, and then next I click the Save button. Just do the same. Okay, and then when it saves, this is where it's time to rock and roll and input the materials. So we see the section name on the left. To the right, you see a link that says View Takeoff, or it's under Takeoff, and it says View, and Takeoff edit. We're going to edit this takeoff, so you click edit takeoff. Okay, now I'm going to walk you through actually inputting the materials from the material takeoff page. I'm going to walk you through that, but here's what you need to know. At the top, click on video clips. Okay, and then it has three columns you'll see at the top, commercial, residential, and structured cabling. So if you want to learn to estimate any of those disciplines, commercial electrical, residential electrical, or low voltage, which is structured cabling, you would watch the respective videos. For commercial, you would watch the first video there, John Kelsey Introduction to Takeoff, and then the videos down the left-hand side, watch each and every one. Okay? Or residential, you'd watch the videos down the middle. Okay, or structured cabling, same thing. You watch the videos down the right-hand side. Okay, now that said, I'm going to walk you through now the material takeoff part of this. Again, back to the takeoff sheet, you notice that there's a list of items down one side, down under material. There's a quantity, and then on the right again, I took the time to write in how you would find those items. So 20-amp duplex receptacle, or rather 20-amp receptacle, let me see, 20 amp duplex, there's eight of them. It says assembly catalog 200, commercial, industrial 14. Let me show what I mean. Over on the left, start by clicking the assemblies button. And when you do, it opens up a list of assemblies. Now this is pretty self-explanatory right here. This is the assembly catalog. So uh, again, on the right, it says uh, assembly catalog 200. So we'll click on 200 for commercial assemblies. And then it says, um, 
14 receptacles. So under Category Receptacles, we'll click the plus sign next to 14. And it displays several different options for receptacle assemblies. Now we're going to drill down in this and input these assemblies. Again, the takeoff page on the right shows eight of them. Okay, you should be able to see this bigger and better now. So we're going to drill down into receptacles, plastic plates, and it'll display the receptacles on the bottom. Now I'm going to grab this line right here, just put my cursor on it, left click, hold it down. I call this unsquinching to move this over so I can see um, where the items are. Now when you're inputting any devices, you want to make sure and be mindful of if there's a specification grade. You'll see the list of receptacles here. There's specification one and spec 2 and standard. Now we're going to be looking for a 20 amp standard. I happen to know that's assembly number 6. So if just scroll down to assembly number 6. See how the description shows one receptacle 20 amp standard 120 volt. Now just for your sake I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go click I'm going to just go put one of these in and I'm going to add it and you don't have to do this, but I want to explain it real quick. This is how the assemblies appear, okay? It'll show a description at the top. Let me just click Save so you can see this. I'm going to go back and delete it, but I just want you to see how this works. This is how the assemblies work. The, the assembly for a duplex receptacle includes a 4S box, a plastering, some mounting hardware, just 50 cents for mounting hardware, the duplex receptacle, the plate, a ground pigtail and some wire nuts, okay? So this is what one assembly consists of. Now I'm gonna go through and delete these and just go input eight of these assemblies as was shown on the takeoff sheet. Okay, so here I put eight for the quantity in assembly number six. Again, it reads receptacle 20 amp standard, 120 volt, PL, which means plastic plate, frame means it's in an open wall. So I just scroll up here at the bottom and click the Add button. Now, don't click the Add button repeatedly because if you do, it's going to input a bunch of it's going to import a bunch of assemblies here. You just want to click Add once, let it appear on the right, and then click the Save button. Okay. So when you've done this a few times and know what you're looking for, this gets this process gets really fast. Okay. Um, but notice again, it it input four or I should say eight 4S boxes, eight rings, eight times 50 cents for mounting hardware, um, and uh, receptacles, eight receptacles, and so on, okay? So when you input multiples of these assemblies, it shows or displays all the parts needed for all the assemblies. Now, I want to make a note of something else on this specifically uh, specific assembly. Look, sometimes you choose to use some kind of spanner bracket or caddy bracket or some, some, some type of item that that uh, spans the studs to mount your 4S box to. To edit this, you'll simply click on it. Let's say I use a, a caddy bracket that costs $4.50. Just click on this line, click Edit. I'm going to change this to $4.50 instead of four, uh, 50 cents. Click Change it to $4.50 and click Save. Okay, now I want to explain something real quick here. Look look at the, uh, line 2, which is the 4S box, okay? It shows eight of them. Look, the way the program is set up is it has national average pricing, what they call national average pricing for materials, several thousand materials, okay? So that shows the unit price, and you have to be aware of the unit of measure next to that. See how it shows the, do, the, the price of the 4S boxes is $58.04 per C? That is Roman numeral C. It means the price per hundred. And so since we input eight of those, it displays a price of $4.64 for all of these. It does the extensions for you. Now here's another thing. Red Rhino has a labor catalog. When you input labor, or I should say when you input something, it inputs the labor with that item, with that material item. It pulls it in from the, the labor catalog and shows the labor hours. Now eventually we're going to we're going to see a report that shows the total labor hours. I'll show you that in a few minutes. But it shows that it shows that the program shows 0.23 hours to install a 4 a 4S box. So it shows the labor for eight of them, the extended labor, is 1.84 hours. Now, guys, again, you have to pay attention to the unit of measure here. There's basically three of them in Red Rhino, and I'll show you more as I go along. There's E for each. We've already seen C for 100, right, per 100. And then there's M for 1,000. So E for each, Roman numeral C means per 100. 
and Roman numeral M means per thousand. You'll see that in cable or wire, it's going to price and do labor per thousand feet. Okay, let me go on to the next item. The next item we see on the takeoff sheet is the 20 amp quad. It shows a quantity of two. Now, they're in the same category, if you will, of the duplex. I'll show you those in Rhino. Okay, if we scroll down a little further in this assembly category, we're going to look for quad assemblies, okay? So you see the one in parenthesis on these receptacle assemblies. A two in parenthesis means there's two of the devices, okay, which will be a quad. We're going to scroll down. I happen to know that they live at number 12 assembly. So number 12 here shows two duplex, 20 amp standard. So there was what two of those on the takeoff sheet we put input quantity of two scroll up here click add and then when it populates to the right we're going to save it there we go populates to the right again this is the way the program displays assemblies it shows it shows the the name of the assembly the items in the assembly and it ends with a dashed line to separate it from the next entry i'm just going to click save to save my work Okay, I'm sharing the takeoff sheet here with Red Rhino again. Next on the list is a GFI, I should say a 20 amp duplex weatherproof GFI. Okay, so again it shows assembly catalog, commercial industrial, 14 receptacles. Now we're already on 14 receptacles, but we're going to go look under a new category. Again, the description of this is it's weatherproof. See the WP, that's what that stands for. There was one weatherproof GFI. And now I'll show you how to input that. Okay, weatherproof receptacle assemblies are in the same category under 14 receptacles here. But over here on the left, you see that there's a category for weatherproof. 14.3 is what it is currently. So I'm going to click on receptacles, weatherproof, and it's going to display weatherproof receptacles. Now, again, what's important is we find the right assembly here. Now, I'm going to scroll down real slow and show you what that is. See, we have... a uh, uh, receptacle GFI, here's a one gang GFI receptacle, 120 volt weatherproof. Now you don't know this by looking, you'd have to input this receptacle assembly to know this, but I happen to know that that assembly right there is, is going to be a bell box with a bell box cover. We want the one that's a framed receptacle with a weatherproof cover. Look at here, 42A, let me scroll down a bit here. 42 set, 2A says it's one GFI frame wall receptacle, 120 volt, weatherproof, and the uh, the designation here means that it's a wall mounted box. Okay, so we're going to input that one. So I'll click on it. Oops. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to do that, but you know what? When you do click on the names of these, it does show you the components <laughs> in the assembly. I didn't even mean to click there. So now you know. If you click on the name of the assembly um, over here on the left, it will show the contents in it. Now, to close it, you have to click the little red X. Okay, let me go on and just put one of these assemblies in. So I'll put in a quantity of one. Scroll up to the top here and click Add. Let me move this back over here a little bit and click save. So in this instance, what this did was it input the 4S box, the ring, the hardware, the mounting hardware, the receptacle, and a weatherproof single receptacle cover. Okay, so that's for that item. Next on the list is a data stub up. Now to the right, it shows there's a quantity of five of them. I'll show you these assemblies. These are really slick. And it's assembly catalog 200. That's always commercial industrial, okay? 55 phone data stub up. So a quantity of five phone data stub ups. I'll show you something here. When you're in the product catalog or assembly catalog in Red Rhino, you can click the little negative sign to collapse the menu. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to collapse the menu for receptacles by clicking the little negative sign here. And I'm going to go down to 55 phone data step up. Now this doesn't have a plus sign next to it. That just means there's no subcategories. I'm just going to click on it and it'll display the assemblies at the bottom. Now um, I'll show you specifically which ones I'm going to put in here, but just notice this. Notice that it has an assembly with a one gang ring, 
with a pull string, okay? Just a ring with a pull string. It has a two gang ring with a pull string and so on. There's several assemblies in here. Look at this one. It's a one gang ring with 10 foot of three quarter inch EMT. Read through these yourself. Come input some different ones so you understand what's in here. Now, in this case, I'm looking for one with a 4S box, a ring, and 10 foot of three quarter. So here's a one gang ring with 10 foot of one inch. Right above that is is two gang ring. Again, these are still in the rings. I'm looking for a 4S box. So here's one, 4S deep box, one gang ring with 10 feet of three quarter inch EMT. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to go put five, a quantity of five in here. Now I'm going to scroll up and click the add button. It'll populate to the right. Let me click save and we'll go over description. Okay, now, see how fast and easy this is? Look, look what it, the input, or I should say, look what the outcome is from inputting that assembly. It shows the description of the assembly here. Line 20, it shows a 4S deep box with certain size knockouts here. We input five of them, five assemblies, so there's five of those. Five plaster rings, 50 feet of three-quarter inch EMT, a set screw connector for the box, uh, conduit supports, 70 feet of eighth inch pull line. See, it put a pull string in there for you. And it also put an insulated bushing on the side that stubs out, okay? These are slick assemblies. Again, when you get used to using these, you'll fly through the input of these guys. Okay, next on the takeoff sheet is fixtures, okay? Now, without uh, without me telling you, just pause the video for a second. Just see if you can figure out where the assemblies are for lighting fixtures, okay? Just pause the video for a minute. Okay, the takeoff to the right, takeoff to the right shows nine two by fours and three two by twos. Now we're going to go input those at the same time. So over on the left, if you guessed fixture assemblies, you're correct. That means light fixture assemblies. I'm going to click on the plus sign next to 10. Now you'll notice there's subcategories here. There's recessed and surface mounted LED and fluorescent. There's recessed incandescent, surface incandescent exit lights and outdoor fixtures. The best way to actually learn what's in these assembly catalogs is to go drill down into them and input them. Now we're looking for two by foot two and two by four um, recessed LEDs. So I'm going to click on 101 recessed LED. Now you'll see at the top here they have different assemblies down at the bottom left I should say the top of that list what I call a laundry list here. The top two items are two by four LED with parabolic lens and two by two LED parabolic lens. Now they have different types of lenses in here. Frankly, the labor that it puts out is going to be the same for two by twos and two by fours mostly, um, with the exception of if they're, they're emergency fixtures. If emergency fixtures is going to it's going to display a little bit more labor. I'm just going to go put in what would it say? Uh, the takeoff sheet says what? Read yours. It says nine LEDs, uh, two by four and three two by twos, okay? I'm gonna click add, populate it to the right. I wanna explain something further about this now. We're going to show you later, I'm going to show you later about this. Notice how it shows the fixture here, the quantity, and it shows a zero for the number of dollars for fixtures. You have to get these quoted and you have to put the fixture quote into the estimate, and I'll show you where at a later video here, okay? So next we just want to go up and click Save. I'm going to scroll it back down so we can look at this. Okay, so see, we input both fixture assemblies at the same time. Let me explain something real quick about this. See how it, it, it shows the two before LED? It shows a quantity of zero. Again, we're going to get that quoted, and we're going to input the quote into the recap. I'll show you that later. But notice it, sh it displays 0.63 hours of labor to install one of those fixtures. 0.63 labor hours, okay? That means it's just a little bit over a half an hour, right? 0.5 hours is a half hour. 0.75 is three quarters of an hour or 45 minutes, okay? So it also output, the output also was two ceiling wires, or they're called earthquake wires sometimes, for each fixture. Now, let's say a lot of times when I when we're bidding a, a commercial, rather I should say a public jobs, like for the state or county or city, they require one fixture, I should say one earthquake wire, or one ceiling wire per fixture. If so, I would edit this number and just double it, okay? I'm not going to do that here, but that's what I would do. 
um, if I had to. Let me just go up and save this, and I'll scroll back down. Okay. Okay, so back on track here. Um, again, um, oh, so the rest of the input here, it, it, it shows nine whips. It shows $3.85 material for each whip and 0 0.10 hours, 0 0.1 hours, not very much labor. And it also input the wire nuts for those. Here, same thing for two by twos. It displayed the two by two fixture, labor only. The earthquake wires or ceiling wires, fixture whip, and wire nuts, okay? That's the way these assemblies work. Again, the, the best way to learn to use Red Rhino is to just drill down in some of these assemblies and go input a quantity of one over here and input it over on the right and just see what components are in the assemblies. This saves you a ton of time. Okay, now back to the takeoff sheet. Um, the next item is a one gang and two gang switches, okay, 20 amp. It shows a quantity of one of each, okay, two gang switch and one gang switch. Now, I want to explain something real quick. We have switches also in the assembly catalog, okay, under 200 for commercial. I'm going to just use the device wizard to show you how to use that. You can use wizards or assemblies to input a lot of these devices, stuff like plugs and switches, okay? So we're going to use, at this time, a wizard. That's something different that you haven't seen yet. So over on the top left, you're going to start by clicking on the wizards button. When you do, the wizards will populate on the left side. You'll see a lot of different wizards here. Go experiment with these. There's an alarm wizard, automatic transfer switch wizard, a circuit breaker wizard. Now, I prefer to use uh, to input circuit breakers in a different place, but go play with this and see what see see how it works. Okay? There's a bus duct wizard, conduit wizard. Conduit wizard is something you'll use a ton. Okay? Now we're going to go right to the device wizard. I'll just click the little arrow to the right, and the wizard will open. On these pop-ups, you always start at the top and work your way down. If you see a Find button, you'll always want to click the Find button when you're done with the selections on the top here, and that's what we're going to do. So first, we're going to input one 1-gang one 20-amp switch. We're going to set the drop-down at the top for 20 amps. The grade we want to just be standard. See the different grades in here? Of course, there's no GFCI switches, but just click Standard and it asks for the plate and the box type, okay? So these are both plastic plates and frame boxes. Next, we're gonna click the Find button. You always have to do this so it populates down below. Now, what it did was, see how it populates the different switches here? Now, this is another drop-down that you're gonna work inside of. See how it populates switches or outlets or twist lock receptacles or dimmers or J boxes. So this is kind of a list of all different, uh, several different assembly, assemblies that you can input here. I'm just gonna work in switches, okay? But if we wanted to, we could put outlets in here um, in, instead of using the assemblies, okay? So let me proceed with that. Okay, at the top under switch here, I'm going to click the drop down. Okay, now just take a look at these. It'll make sense what these are. But look at this first item is a 20 amp one pole standard switch assembly, or I'm sorry, switch. Okay, so again, we're using the wizard, but this is going to input one switch. Look, it says one 20 amp three pole motor switch, one 20 amp three way standard switch, and so on. Okay, so I'm just going to click on 20 amp, one pole standard switch. I'm going to populate it with that. Now, on the takeoff sheet, it said that there was um, just one of those. So I'm going to put in a quantity of one, click the add button, and it will populate them with parts and pieces down here on the bottom. Let me close the window and show you. I'll close the window and save. So we'll notice the output here, line 40 here, it shows about the same output as an assembly, doesn't it? So again, wizards are just another way you can input devices if you choose to use the wizards. So it input a 4S box, a plaster ring, mounting hardware, <clears throat> one switch, a plate, a pigtail, and some wire nuts. Okay, next we're going to go input or find the two gang switch. Again, we open the device wizard and set the settings at the top and find so we set the settings at 20 amp standard grade. Next, we'll drill down in the switch drop down, find the right switch. Again, we're looking for a two gang 20 amp. Click the drop down. We're looking for a two 20 amp one pole standard switches. 
right here. Two 20 amp one pole. So this program has has uh, one pole, two pole, three pole, clear up to six pole um, switch assemblies or switch wizards, okay, and wizards. So I'm going to click on that, just put in the quantity. If there was five, I'd put five. There's only one in this estimate. I click, I put one in the quantity and click add. Populates down to the bottom. When it populates, I close the window and click save. Usually when it saves, the screen flashes. Here we see, again, the description on line 49 is two switches standard grade. So here's, this is interesting. It, it shows a 1-4S box, a two-gang ring. See that there? A two-gang ring, mounting hardware, two switches, one two-gang plate, and so on. So these wizards, oops, I'll pause it there. These wizards make it super fast to input the materials. Hey, here's a tip for you. I recommend that you click save after each entry. If you happen to not, or let me say it this way, if you happen to go input 100 or 200 lines of materials in here without clicking save, and you, get hap you happen to get knocked offline or accidentally go offline, then in that case, you will not, you'll have to go re-input all those materials again. So always just click save. It's easy to do that. Next, we're going to get into the conduit wizard. On the takeoff sheet, we see that the, there's an entry for 12 2MC cable and 11 runs here. So it looks like it's 140 feet. Now the description over here shows conduit wizard. It shows wizards and conduit wizard. Now we already opened the wizard for devices. We're going to click on wizards here, or if the wizards already dis, are not already displayed here, you're going to click wizards. In this case, they're still here. So let's just click wizards so you know to do that if you need to. We're going to select the conduit wizard. I'm going to click here to open the Conduit Wizard. Conduit Wizard is something that just saves you a ton of time. Once you've done this a few times, it gets really easy to make these entries. Now, um, to that said, I already showed you where the training videos were, but if you open this Conduit Wizard and want to know what to do, you can click up here, this little, con or this little camera, and click on that and watch a video how to use this. I'm going to fly through this. You start at the top with the conduit wizard always, and then you click find when there's a find button always. So we're going to click the drop down and find MC cable. Notice the different types of conduit here. PVC, GRC coated PVC, they call that Rob Roy. Some people call that Rob Roy. EMT rigid MC, there's our MC cable. I'm just going to click on it now. Now, with MC cable, it's a little different input than other types of conduit. You only need the, the type and size at the top. You don't need fittings, of course, because they're not EMT fittings. So you click the drop down that says size, and what you want to do is scroll down here past the six inch, and you'll see 14.2, that's 14.2 MC cable, 14.3. This is 12.2 with a control wire in it. See that? If you're, if you're needing to make drops to switches um, for, with control wires, you'd use that one. In this case, we see 12.2, 12.3. These are the two entries we're going to be making. I'm going to click on 12.2. Then I have to click the Find button to find that material. Now, MC cable is a lot easier to input here because you just need the total length of all runs here and the number of runs. The rest of this stuff doesn't matter or affect it. So in this case, we said on the takeoff sheet there was 140 feet and the number of runs was 11. So here we go. We're going to input the 140 feet here, 140. Number of runs, there was 11. Now with this, you just want to click Add. You, again, don't click Add multiple times. It'll input it multiple times. Click Add one time. Now when you see the entry on the right, you can just minimize this wizard or, or just close it. I choose to minimize it because we're going to go back and input some more conduit. And then notice this. See how the program shows 12.2 MC cable with green ground? You input, we input 140 feet. It shows the price per M here, like I told you. Conduit and wire and MC cable is priced per thousand feet. That's what that Roman numeral M means, okay? Now it shows the labor at something different. 1.9 hours, 93 hours, 1.93 hours to install per hundred feet. 
Okay, so again, using the conduit wizard, I'm going to click save and just go back down. Here we go. Use the conduit wizard for MC cable. We're going to do that. We're going to input the 12.3. Go ahead and try and do that yourself. Pause this video and see if you can go use that conduit wizard, set it up kind of the same way I did, but use it for 12.3 MC cable, and there was 190 feet and 12 runs. Pause the video and try it and do it yourself. Okay, how did you do? I'm going to go reset this now, wizard for the 12.3. Let's see how to do it here. So the, it's already set up for MC cable um, because I just minimized it and opened it again. So I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to find 12.3 MC cable and click find. Again, with MC cable, you just put in the, the uh, total length of all runs and number of runs. In this case, it's 12.3. It was 190 feet. 190 and number of runs was 12, 1, 2. So I just click the add button, populates to the bottom and click save. Simple as that. Next we're going to go input the three quarter inch run. Now I'll just say it, I won't show it this time, but the program shows, or rather the takeoff sheet shows, is 20 feet of three quarter with five number 12s, okay, and two runs. Now let me say it again, we'll open the wizard, we'll open the conduit wizard, we're going to start from the top down. We're going to start from the top down and look for EMT. So click EMT. In this case, we want to set up the type fittings. Okay. Set screw die cast. Let me explain this real quick. Set screw die cast, set screw steel. Weatherproof die cast, weatherproof steel. That's your compression connectors or couplings, right? Those are your compression fittings. Weatherproof stands for, WTP stands for weatherproof. Then IS, I should say IT here stands for insulated throat. If you need, if you need, uh, uh, insulated throat fittings, then you choose those. I'm just going to set it up for set screw steel, and I'm going to set the size for three quarter inch as shown on the takeoff sheet and click find. Now in the training videos, we show you how to use this conduit wizard for feeders and branch, but in this case, we're just going to input this little bitty, two, two little bitty runs to stow up out of the panel. So I'm going to just fly through this. Guys, do watch the other training video, okay? So we're going to click the conduit application and set it for plus 10 feet. That means the conduit is above 10 feet off the floor. Next, we're going to put in the total length of all runs. In this case, it was just 20 feet. So we'll type in 20. The number of runs was two. We want that so the program shows how many connectors are needed. Now, it's already set, preset at number 12 stranded. And I'm a minute, I'm going to, in a second, I'm going to go input the quantity here. In fact, let me just do it now. It was five number 12s. But I want to show you something else. When you click the wire drop down, you scroll down and you'll see at the top is a 12 stranded and solid. Below that is some thermostat wire. Below that is fire alarm cable. See that? And then it starts into the copper wire. 16, 14, 10, and 8. And it goes clear up to 750 MCM, okay? So look this over. It has all different sizes of conduit. If you're doing grounding wire, it has bare copper wire here. You would select that. And it has aluminum wire if you need aluminum for feeders. And it has cable if you're doing structured cabling. Okay. And at the very bottom, just so you know, if you need a pull string, you would scroll down to the bottom and select a pull string. Now, I'm not going to populate anything in here. I was just showing you that so you know about it. So I'll just click away and it won't input uh, any any uh, other type wires. Okay. Now, what I want to explain here is wire makeup length. The amount of wire, this program inputs the number of feet of wire makeup that you put there. The wire makeup length is defined as the amount of wire sticking out beyond the end of the conduit to go to the termination point. Look, if you're coming out of the top of a panel, sometimes it might have to go, um, uh, go three feet down to terminate to the circuit breakers. In this case, it's set for a foot and a half. I'm going to make it three foot. So I just set that. Now, I'm not going to put elbows quantity because three-quarter conduits bent in the field. If I was doing feeders, I would count those, and that's shown in our videos. I'm just going to click Add. I'm going to close the wizard. I'm going to go up here and click Save. Scroll down. Now, let's look at what the input is here.
Okay. Notice that it input conduit, couplings, connectors, supports, and total footage of wire. Now, it shows all these items with labor and material cost and does your material extensions and labor extensions, okay? So see, we input 20 feet of three quarter. It shows the price of three quarter per hundred feet, the total amount or the total cost for those, those feet of conduit, and the number of hours with extended labor. Okay, hope that helps. Next, we're going to go input circuit breakers. Okay, and look at your takeoff sheet. Notice there's five one pole 20 amp circuit breakers shown on the takeoff sheet. We're going to go input that next in the product catalog. Okay, now when we left off over on the left-hand side, we left off with using wizards. So I'm just going to click the drop-down. You want to click the drop-down and select product catalog. Okay, I want to I want to just uh, in, interject a reminder here. In order to learn to use Red Rhino, it's really critical path that you watch our training videos. They're called video clips. You click on video clips. I always explain. I already explained this, but to estimate commercial, you watch the videos down the left-hand side for residential down the center, structure cabling down the right hand side. Really important to watch those videos. It'll help you get your mind around how this works, how to navigate and make it fast. Now, I'm just gonna drill down into product 8000, but let's look on the takeoff sheet. That's what it shows. Product 8000-1015 circuit breaker termination. Let's go look for that. Click on product 8000. Can you find the circuit breakers at 11015? Take a look. I'm going to scroll down here, click on, there it is, circuit breaker termination labor. Right below it is wire termination labor, something else you'll probably be inputting on many estimates. Click on circuit breaker termination labor, and it populates the circuit breakers. This is a time when I like to unsquinch this, just left click and pull this over. Okay, so we're just going to go input a one pole 20 amp circuit breaker and it's right here. But I want to show you something. It's important you know this. So if you just scroll down real slow, you'll see one pole, two pole, and three pole circuit breakers clear up to three pole 4000 amp. Look, any size or any time, I should say, anytime you have to input circuit breakers into an estimate, you always want to input them all right here at the same time. Usually what I do is I go to the panel schedule, I take off all the panels and I input them, I take off all the circuit breakers and input them. We have we have training videos on that, but just make sure that you go count all the circuit breakers on a job. We're doing a small example here of just five one full 20s, but you might literally put in hundreds of circuit breakers. Okay, so um, back to the subject here. There's circuit breaker termination one pole 20. I'm going to click in that box and there's just five circuit breakers. So I'm going to put a quantity of five and click add. Now I'm going to scroll over here and I'm going to click save. And then we'll come back down and look at that. There we go. So guys, again, with circuit breakers, it does not have the material price in here. Now I saved this. I should have waited and input it on the takeoff sheet. I showed that the cost of those circuit breakers is $18. Okay, now of course, if your price is something different, you would go input it here. I'm just gonna click in on this line. I'm gonna go up here and click on the edit button. And when I do, I'm gonna scroll down. It lets me edit anything on this line. Now the editing videos, or the videos how to edit this or delete anything is shown in the video clips I told you about. But in this case, the price is $18. So I'm gonna put in 18 here. Okay, now this says C quote over here. Let me scroll over. It says C quote. I'm going to remove the word C quote. C quote is a note to yourself to get them quoted and put the price in for the quote. But we're, we're just going to populate. This is a small project. Let's say I, I know what the cost of my circuit breakers is. I put it in here, 18 bucks a piece. Scroll up to the top and click save. Okay, now we're getting near the end of this list, aren't we? How are you doing with this? Are, are you comprehending how this works? Do you see how using assemblies and wizards really speeds up the process? Trust me when I say when you go through this a few times and do it a few times, it gets really second nature, and you're able to really input this stuff very quickly. Next, we're going to look at assemblies. Here it shows a 4S with blank and a 411 box with blank cover, and they're both in assemblies 200. So we go over here and click on the assemblies button, click on 200 for commercial, 
Now we're going to look for four inch square boxes. These are assemblies. We're in the assembly catalog. We want a 4S box assembly. There's one of them that we put in here with a blank. So we click on it. Look here, it shows a 4S box with a blank cover, one gang ring, two gang ring, and light ring. So again, I just want one of these guys. I'll put in a quantity of one, click add, populates to the right. See how the, sim similar this works? You just find what you're looking for, input it, and it shows the it shows the output of materials and labor. While I'm at it, right, without saving, I'm just going to go over here and click on 411 box assemblies. And you see again, there's 411 sixteenths with a blank cover, one gang ring, two gang ring. I'm going to go put two of these guys in, which is on the takeoff sheet, and click add. And then next I'll go click save. So now that time I made two entries, didn't I, without saving? It's safe to do that, but I wouldn't put hundreds of lines or even dozens of lines in there without clicking the Save button. In the product catalog, it describes it as 7,423. You click on the drop down to get to the product catalog. Let me scroll up here. Click on 4,000 or 7,000 to open it. Go down to 423 wire nuts. Again, forgive me if I wasn't sharing my screen a minute ago. <laughs> Click on wire nuts. You go input the total quantity that you want. In this case, it was 200. You click the add button, and when you do, it populates over to the right and shows the wire nuts. Okay, so again, the next video is going to be on the recap portion of this, and I'll show you how to use that in another video.